got some stoneware. I don't see any cracks on it. Look at that. I think it's a beehive jug. Sometimes these have writing on them. Oh, let's see. Whoa. That's amazing. That thing is mint. I'm on a construction site in Lincoln, Nebraska. This whole lot was dozed. I got a call to come down here. There were 1890s houses lining this area. I was told there were some glass and pottery fragments that came out of the ground over there by the alley. We'll go do some investigating. I'm standing in the alley of where those houses once were. They lined the street up there. You'll notice this sunken area. The guys that invited us down here dug a test hole. They said this thing was 10 feet deep. Bottomed out in the 1870s or 80s era. I put a probe rod in at the left where I figure the edge of this thing is. So we'll get it opened up. We're three feet down. This pit is loaded. Look at all this stuff. There was a... Uh, right here, some embossing. Whoa. There it is, poison. That's a poison bottle. See the ridges on it? Back in the day, there was no electricity, so when folks were fumbling through the medicine cabinet, they wanted a way folks would know it's poison and wouldn't consume it. This thing dates back to the 1890s. A little ink bottle. I think it's a round stands. What do we have here? Sanford's, classic. So Sanford's and Carter's were the main companies back in the day. It's a tool top. Look at all this stuff. Oh wow. You know, this is pre-1900. That's a little uh, Philadelphia Oval style prescription bottle. It would have had a paper label on that front panel. This, I'm not getting my hopes up. Yeah, these are almost always broken, this ornate stuff. But look at that. That's an old teacup that was likely made in Europe, uh, 1890s again, I'm sure. Yeah, we may have an intact mason jar. This is an oldie. Wow. That's a machine made piece. These were machined early on, a lot earlier than bottles. Yeah, some kind of fruit jar, no embossing on it. It looks like there's some kind of pattern on this. There's uh, all kinds of broken glass in here. Oh wow, looks like a creamer of some sort. You can see it's damaged. It must have broke way back when and that's why it was discarded. I think this is pressed glass. Looks like a oh, classic. Piso's Cure. Piso's Cure for consumption. This is an aqua example. You'll also see these in like a beautiful emerald green. Now when this side collapsed, I noticed something sticking out. This blue color, another classic. Bromo Seltzer, Emerson Drug Company tooled top. It's a, uh, again, turn of the century. One of the most common bottles you'll find across the U.S. We've got some stoneware. I don't see any cracks on it. Look at that. I think it's a beehive jug. Sometimes these have writing on them. Whoa, that's amazing. That thing is mint. It's got the two-tone on it. It's a beehive liquor jug. Now, uh, I don't see any writing on it, but still, this is an amazing piece. It's well over 100 years old. Uh, 
Oh, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Look at that. This thing's embossed. That's wild. Pinex. Oh, this thing has a tooled top. You know, I've only found machine-made examples of this. And I believe it was some kind of a patent medicine. It would have had a paper label on the front. Here we go. Yep, Bromo Seltzer. This was one of the most popular products in the US back around the turn of the century. Oh, wow, a little uh, prescription bottle, I think. Maybe from a local drugstore. Uh, no. No company name embossed on it. I think it's a round style prescription. This looks older. You know, uh, some kind of an ink bottle. Yeah, this thing's delicate. Look at that iridescence on it. It's the rainbow effect that's from minerals in the ground from it being buried all these years. Down about four feet, uh, one of the sides started collapsing in and we noticed some stuff sticking out. Looks like a little Vaseline jar. Still has some contents in it. There it is. A Chesbro Manufacturing Company Vaseline. Dates back to about 1900. little uh, plate to a child's tea set. Looks like a semi-porcelain type thing. Same turn of the century era. Oh wow, yeah, that's a earthenware doorknob. Must have uh, broken off the mount. They threw it down. This could have been a doorknob to the outhouse with a building that stood here. Mud is thick, it's been a nightmare working through. Look at that. That is beautiful. That's a, some kind of English transfer where I believe. Uh, looks like flow blue. Here we go. Little prescription bottle. It's got a sunburst on the bottom. Yeah, I think that's uh, Dean Foster and company. They usually have that sunburst. Now let's see if there's anything. No embossing. States back to that same turn of the century era. Oh, looks like some earlier stuff. This fell out. It's a cup to a children's tea set, likely a match to that saucer I pulled up earlier. And uh, this caught my eye right away. This would likely ring up on a metal detector, uh, some kind of a brass spoon. Uh, turn of the century, maybe late 19th century. Oh, there we go. This is a JoJo style liquor flask. It's got an unusual top on this thing. I don't know if I've found one with a top quite like that before. Uh, one of these days I'll find one with embossing. That's a pumpkin seed liquor flask. This thing's uh, 1880s, 1890s. The age is definitely getting better. Ah, this mud is sticky. It's making the digging very difficult. There's no embossing on this either, but yeah, that's 1880s, 1890s, a uh, Philadelphia oval style prescription bottle. What am I getting myself into? It's snowing. I've been working around this cast iron pipe. Fortunately, this pit is absolutely loaded. I could barely get a trowel through the ground. You can see the uh, wood lining goes across here. I think this thing's 10 feet long. So there should be a bunch of goodies down here. But I was trying to get this stuff out of the clay is something else. And it's just sticking to everything. And we've got a 
tool top Philadelphia oval style prescription bottle. Can hardly tell with all the mud on it. And this thing, <laughs> wow. Okay, the top's knocked off. I've dug one of these ever. It's a, I believe a shoe polish of some sort. These are one of the most interesting bottles I've ever dug. So it's patent applied for and uh, yeah, Bartlett's. H.A. Bartlett and Company. I think it's from Boston. Or somewhere out east, Philadelphia. Uh, there was something to do with uh, this top that was patented. I think it held a brush or it um, held some kind of fluid in it. It was, I believe, an ink, a polish, maybe a cleaner bottle of some sort, but yeah, this is the second one I've ever seen. here. A little patent medicine, I think. The age is getting good on this. That Bartlett bottles, I'm guessing 1880s. This is likely a, a patent medicine or maybe some kind of uh, small ammonia bottle. And here we go. Yeah, another Bromo Seltzer from the Emerson Drug Company. It's got some of the wood lining stuck in the neck. Wood lining from the privy. nothing home. Prescription bottle. Anything? Uh, Macaulay. Made by the Macaulay Glassworks. Now this is getting to be some good age. This is a 1880s, 1890s piece. Huh. A little uh, castor oil. Looks like it still has some of the castor oil inside of it. chemical bottle. I think, okay, MGW, I think that's the Mallinckrodt Glassworks. They were a major pharmaceutical company uh, responsible for supplying uranium to build the uh, atomic bomb during World War II. That's some kind of a, maybe toiletry. What do we have here? Coke dandruff cure. So that's uh, made prior to the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906. They banned the word cure on all bottles. Uh, this one I believe is 1880s or 90s. All right, now, uh, here we go. Looks like a, oh, a little spoon inside of it. Uh -huh. Looks like a, maybe silver plated, silver plated brass of some sort. And uh, what else do we have here? It's just filled with dirt. Uh, yeah, it's a granite ware, a granite ware uh, coffee pot. This is older, it's late 19th century for sure. This is a really pretty color. Um, looks like a little uh, mason jar lid. Uh, sometimes these have the company name on them, uh, Boyd. The Boyd Company made these, uh, a lot of them back in the day. This has no stamping. Yeah, all this dinnerware is usually broken, but we can get a glimpse of what it looked like. Uh, this is beautiful. I, I'm guessing this is 1860s or 70s. That's a pressed glass, uh, maybe a creamer pitcher of some sort, late 19th century. And no embossing, shoe fly liquor flask. Rarely these have a saloon or proprietor name on them. That's unusual. That's a really unusual piece. I wonder if this is an applied top. It's tooled. 
It's got some great age. See how it bevels up towards the shoulders. That's really something. It looks like some prescription bottles here. The soil's still sticky. Oh, it's like a French square. That's great age. I'd call that 1880s for sure. Oh, hey. It's a shoe polish, I think, maybe an ink. It's got some iridescence from being buried all these years. Another uh, French square style. No embossing, no glass company marks on it. Ah, one of these needs to be embossed. Little uh, Philadelphia oval style. Oh, looks like maybe a pharmaceutical type bottle. There's a no embossing on it, tooled top. And an unembossed JoJo style flask. I see some embossing. Looks like it could be a patent medicine type. I'm amazed at how loaded this pit is. I just wish it was a little easier digging. Wakefield's Blackberry Balsam. That's an oldie. I want to say that's 1880s. I believe I've dug some of these in Yankton, South Dakota. Tops knocked off this one, unfortunately. Yeah, I can really get a trowel in. There's so much stuff uncovering. This has been a nightmare. Even this little one's like suctioned into the ground. Uh, looks like a, is it a Bromo Seltzer? Might not be any, yeah, it's Emerson Drug Company, Bromo Seltzer, another tooled top piece. This would have been a nice little piece. This ornate stuff's usually broken, they would have held on to it, but every once in a while we get something that was discarded by mistake. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, it's a spinach pattern. I find a lot of these in the Midwest. It was popular around the turn of the century. Oh, I can't even see. Okay, the top is missing. Couldn't even tell from all the mud. Got some nice iridescence on it. No embossing. This could be a goodie. Look at that. It's broken, but that is a nice looking little pocket flask. You don't find them that small. It's a pumpkin seed, some will call them, some call it a picnic flask. Huh. Maybe a piece to a tea set, could be a creamer or a little pitcher. It's got a nice, uh, I think like a hand painted design on it there. wood slate that's an old uh, slate pencil for a like a slate board it was a popular precursor to the chalkboard and a little french square style <clears throat> yeah tool top little uh, sample size medicine possibly Okay, I thought the top was knocked off at first. Looked like a St. Jacob's oil. I dig a lot of those. This is a tooled top, little uh, round prescription style uh, drugstore bottle. I've seen something like this before. Sanford's ink. Another Sanford's uh, one I saw was like a bell top. 
don't know if that was a patent style, but uh, that's the tooled top Sanford zinc. <laughs> Could be a, I think it's a little narrow for a Vaseline container. Some kind of little apothecary piece, tooled top uh, circa 1890. I see some embossing. This pit down here is loaded. I've concluded this thing must have been dipped or cleaned out back in the day and uh, they threw some of the stuff back in. H.W. Brown Druggist, Lincoln, Nebraska. I've never seen one of these. That's got to be an 1880s bottle. It's a Blake style. Yeah, look at all this stuff. I guess you can just kind of choose to pull some of these out. Another uh, JoJo style flask. That's a uh, Again, 1880s. Look at all this stuff. Another uh, prescription bottle. No embossing on it. I'd put this thing at about 1890. And another liquor flask. Looks like a strap side. Yeah, a strap sided liquor flask. Uh, I think some call this a Union Oval. I'm blown away. I've got an aqua prescription bottle. That's not common. Too bad there's no embossing on this thing. And a little uh, the ointment bottle or pharmaceutical. I think some kind of little pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical style bottle. And another prescription. Yeah, not even a glass company mark on this thing. Huh. Yeah, another uh, pharmaceutical bottle. Uh, yeah, no embossing on this either. A three piece mold though. here classic st. Jacob's oil it's the st. Jacob's oil company this is a little smaller than the ones I usually pull up could have been a sample size of some sort I believe these came from uh, Baltimore Maryland oh, so that's some groundwater what do we have here? Pitchers, Dr. Pitchers Castoria. A uh, super popular medicine back in the day was a uh, castor oil. No way. <laughs> I've never seen one of these before. It's like some kind of diamond cleated liquor flask. Now it's a threaded top, but it's a ground lip. If you see that rough area there, that's an early manufacturing process. This thing's gotta be 1880s. And some, oh, this thing's early. It's got some iridescence on it. Could be a toiletry, maybe a pharmaceutical, kind of a generic type piece. Nothing home. And another uh, tooled top prescription bottle. No embossing, circa 1890. Some kind of semi porcelain plate. Uh, looks damaged, but sometimes these can have some wild patterns on them. Uh, what do we have? Oh, wow. Yeah, it does have an interesting design. You know, uh, that's late 19th century. I don't think it's transferware, but it's a uh, Definitely got some good age to it. Near the bottom edge, there's a few pieces down here. Looks like uh, some stuff the privy dippers missed back in the day. Huh. 
What's on this thing? Uh, Pinex. Okay. Yeah, it looks like another tooled top piece. Uh, these are usually machine made, so that's kind of surprising. Snow embossing on the front would have had a paper label. Ah, oh, stuff is so caked in mud. No embossing I can feel on it. It's a round style prescription bottle, circa 1890. You can see what's left of a use layer there. Ah, uh, no embossing. This should have, though, that would have really been something. It's got an early lip on it. This thing's solid 1880s. We're at the very bottom. You can see that tan clay. Still a few goodies here. Uh, Looks like a shoe fly style liquor flask. No embossing on this thing. Uh, that's definitely 1880s. What do we have here? Another uh, patent medicine. Pitchers. Uh, Dr. S. Pitchers. That's a Castoria. This is a tooled top. Like I said earlier, a castor oil medicine. Oh, something underneath it too. This is, wow. Look at that color. That's a rainbow iridescence. That's from minerals in the ground. You can see the base must have broken back in the day so it was discarded. It's pressed glass. like a three-piece mold uh, pharmaceutical apothecary type piece. That's early. I'd put this in the 1880s somewhere. Huh, a couple pieces. Got a Blake, or not a Blake, a, a French square style prescription bottle. Uh, no embossing. You can see some uh, use layer on the neck part of it. And another. Oh, that iridescence is beautiful. Wish there was some embossing on some of these. That's again 1880s. Oh yeah. Look at all those seeds. Again, it's a dipped pit just the very bottom it's common for these for the corners to have a uh, remnants of a use layer uh, just some plain uh, ironstone china piece I see a lot of writing and also a small little bottle here that's an earlier pill vial I'll show you why if I can clear the top out enough it's got kind of a wider lip on it it's a maybe early machine made on this thing. They don't have seams. And what else? There's that little use layer on the bottom. Ruby foam for the teeth. Put up by E.W. Hoyt and Company, Lowell, Massachusetts. I think Hoyt had a toiletry company as well. Uh, sold perfumes, colognes, that kind of thing. This is a late 19th century for sure. As you can see, I dug into this pocket of bottles uh, near the bottom of the uh, dipped layer. There's something else more interesting down here, though. Look at that. I saw the kind of ribbed pattern on it. It looks like uh, yeah, it might have bricks. See that? That's really interesting. Would have likely had a paper label. This was no doubt a toiletry of some sort. But a brick pattern? I've never seen one of these before. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they're just kind of falling out. Got a tooled crown top. The pit was no doubt dipped. This thing dates to uh, probably about 1905. Uh, Streeter Bottle and Glass Company. Yeah, 
there's some kind of a uh, apothecary, maybe a, a pharmaceutical type bottle, tool top. Look at all this stuff. Some kind of, uh, yeah, no druggist name on it. Huh, an amber type of uh, pharmaceutical. That's a three piece mold. That's a uh, circa 1890. Look at all this stuff. Another uh, pharmaceutical type piece, tooled top. And a little uh, French square made by the Illinois Glass Company. I believe they were located in Alton, Illinois. sticking out here well no embossing on this one either little uh, Philadelphia oval style piece that's unusual I'm not sure if I've ever seen this shape before so I'll show you from the bottom it's got a kind of like beveled sides in the front is embossed outward. That's got an early lip. I'd put this at about 1890, maybe even into the 1880s. We found the corner of the pit. You can see the wood line sides here. Got a couple pieces left. Looks like a Blake style prescription bottle. What do we have here? Kennard and Riggs, pharmacist, Lincoln, Nebraska. I've never seen one of these before. Looks like a Blake style. 1880s, 18, early 1890s. That's clay. I got a couple pieces here. It's like a tarnished spoon. Uh, it was likely silver plated at one point. And this is down into the clay. You can see the wood lining on this. It's like the base of maybe a cake pan or an oil lamp. A pressed glass, late 19th century. Yeah, that's the bottom. This pit is done. Here's the hull. Everything dated back to the 1880s and 1890s. We got a good variety. There's a castor oil bottle, toiletries, those Lincoln pharmacies and that poison. Those are no doubt the best pieces. That beer, some household goods, the chalice, coffee pot. That two-tone jug was a good one. Otherwise, we got some pharmaceuticals, prescription bottles. We also got a few different liquor flasks and some patent medicines in the bottom row there. Well, there you have it. We'll get this thing filled back in. It is very muddy out today. This is like quicksand. But you'll see I kicked some marks in the ground. I was pushing a probe rod through and I was hitting a loss of compaction and some objects. That's a good indicator of an early site. We'll get this thing opened up. That's looking good. I think we're just about through a cap layer. What do we have here? Nice. This has some great age. That's a shoe fly style liquor flask. This is pre-1900 for sure. There we go, some color change in the soil. You know, this may actually be pre-1890. That's a picnic style flask, some call it a pumpkin seed. I think we have a bitters. Try not to get my hopes up. Whoa. Look at that. I think it's a, yeah, Doyle's Hop Bitters. Look at that thing. These have an 1872 patent date on them. This is an 1880s bottle, an applied top. You can see that clay cap and then the pit starts. 
I wish I could find some of these with a embossing on it. it. Has a diamond on the bottom, another picnic style flask. This could be 1880s. Looks like a couple more liquor flasks. I've uncovered this one first. I guess I'll go for it. If you notice, uh, it's kind of maroon colored ash. I find this in earlier sites, pre-1890s. There's a likely an iron uh, deposit in it, making it turn that color once it's in the ground. Broken. There we go. That's a nice shoe fly bottle. Yeah, hopefully we can find one with some markings on it from a local business. There's all kinds of stuff down here. Oh, look at that. So this is a pie crust style. See the ridges on the top? They're a bit spaced out. I found those in pre-1890 sites. Could be a condiment container of some sort. Looks like it has a ground lip. It has a really nice design on it. While well, clearing out the bottom, I found what I believe is a slate shingle repurposed as a slate board. You can see there's some carvings into it, some lines, and there's some cursive that was illegible. Some of it's broken off, but I thought this was really interesting. We've got a few pieces down here. This one right on the bottom. Looks like a prescription bottle. I think I feel embossing. Wow. Zayrung and Dunn Druggists, Lincoln, Nebraska. I've never seen one of these before. <laughs> that's something else. That's got to be pre-1890. This panel piece over here in the corner uh, looks early. Okay, that's an applied top. Oh, there we go. Hamlin's Wizard Oil. This was a very popular product back in the day. I've dug some of these in Yankton, South Dakota. This is a crude one, though. Oh, these are just kind of sticking out. Some kind of a cylinder, uh, round prescription style drugstore bottle. Oh, wow, well, here we go. Broken whiteware, utility wear plate. And another. Here we got a bottom stamp. Uh, Ironstone China. SP Company, I believe. That's a really nice design, a plain whiteware piece. Another liquor flask. It looks like there's a maybe a bitters behind it. This one's a, got a little pointer edge. It's closer to a knife edge. We're in the final corner of the pit. Looks like maybe a liquor flask sticking out here. There's uh, some plates behind it, all kind of wedged in together. Uh, looks like some iron stone. Another shoe fly flask. That's another early one. It's full of groundwater. What do we have? Some iron stone. No back stamps on it. Well, there you have it. This pit is done. Well, it looks like there's actually one more in here. Uh, there's a broken flask, and I saw this piece sticking out. Let's, let's 
see, it looks like another uh, shoe fly. Oh, this one's a wider example. No embossing on it either. This would have held whiskey or brandy. The pit's all finished up. Didn't give a lot, but there was some great age. Got a few pieces here that Lincoln Pharmacy bottle's definitely the best. That slate piece was interesting. Got that Hamlin's Wizard Oil. Good few liquor flasks and that bitters. Well, there you have it. We'll get this thing filled back in. I've been working this area just off of the alley. If you look close, you'll see I kicked some marks in the ground. I would pushed a probe rod through. I hit some objects, compaction differences, possibly some ashes. That's a good indicator of an early site. We'll get this thing opened up. We found some old wooden lining. This is a good indicator. We've got a good few pieces down here. Looks like the top to some sort of liquor flask. Oh, it's down in this really hard packed clay. Oh, it's full of groundwater. No embossing on it, but this is a picnic style. Some folks call it a pumpkin seed style liquor flask. Looks like a mason jar. An earlier style. It has a ground lip on it. Gotta be careful with these things. They can, they can break. Look at that. Mason's patent, November 30th, 1858. This was a fruit jar, just held uh, canned products, preserves, whatever else. Looks like there's some residue in the bottom. I've been working on, this looks like a soap dish. What do we have? That's an early stamp, Ironstone China Meekin. Burslem. I believe that's Alfred Meekin. That uh, black colored stamp is earlier. I'd say this thing could be 1870s or 1880s. Uh, what do we have here? There we go. Kennard and Riggs, pharmacists. Lincoln, Nebraska. That thing's gotta be 1870s, 1880s. That's a good early one. Like a, this is a semi-porcelain piece. I don't see any back stamp on it. it. Must have chipped way back when, so they discarded it. Hmm. I think I feel some embossing on this. There we go. Frank Miller's Crown Dressing, New York. That's a shoe dressing, like a shoe polish, boot polish, leather polish, basically. Ashes. Looks like a Philadelphia oval style prescription bottle. No embossing on this thing. That's pre-1890 though. that an intact chamber pot lid that is some heavy ironstone china there's likely a base to this uh, that broke and then they just discarded the top we've got a hutch it's like a doll and another piece right on bottom so this is the hard packed clay let's see this is an oldie what do we have on it Horsefords. Looks like a 1870s, 1880s bottle. I've uh, dug a few of these before. Oh, 
look at that. Oh, that's wild. Looks like it must have broken. The arm's broken. They discarded it. Would have had a, a clothing and a wig on it back in the day. That's late 19th century for sure. There we go. French square style prescription bottle. Made by the Macaulay Glass Company. I believe they were out of Pittsburgh. This would have had a paper label on the front. And it's intact. What do we have? Tennis embossed. S.J. Irvin, Lincoln, Nebraska. Now I wrote a book on Nebraska sodas. This may have a Baltimore Loop style top. Uh, definitely a hutch mold, but uh, this dates back to about 1890. Here's the hull. Everything dated back to the 1880s and 1890s. Seems the pit was cleaned out way back when and the utility lines going through it didn't help. Did get a good variety though. Got that bluing bottle, a liquor flask, mason jar that embossed nebraska prescription bottle it's a good one blank prescription shoe polish the hutch was no doubt the best piece got a some ironstone china and that doll part well there you have it we'll get this thing filled back in